Good evening and welcome to the Blue Valley District Activity Center on Antioch in Overland Park. Tonight's Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. We've got girls EKL soccer as Blue Valley Southwest takes on Blue Valley West. Hi everybody, Kevin White along with Hugh Williams. This is the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week here on Spectrum Sports. Well, it's pretty easy to see why we picked this one, Hugh. Yeah, the annual big game of the season. These kids have played with each other and against each other in club soccer, and always a big game. They live in the same neighborhoods. Big game for both programs. And both are coming off back-to-back -back state championships. As far as our high V player profile, we'll start with Cassie Forcellini for the Timberwolves. Uh, she does it all. Yeah, midfield player, hard worker, blue-collar player, looks to win the ball defensively in midfield, but also has that knack to create assists, opportunities for teammates as well. And the big score for Blue Valley West is Marissa Papula. Yeah, Papula is that prototypical number nine. She She's a target player, shields the ball very well, very dangerous with a back to goal. 17 goals on the year. Blue Valley West, Blue Valley Southwest. It's the High V High School Game of the Week. Back with the lineups and opening kickoff right after this. And we are ready to play in a game that got moved up by two hours. The man in the middle, Jared Mosier, blows his whistle. Blue Valley Southwest is the team in white, and in red and black is the home team, Blue Valley West. And an early cross that's handled by Zoe Greenberg. Greenberg doing a good job there, demand, commanding her six-yard box, but Ruffalo already getting around the outside. Ruffalo, a lot of pace on the left-hand side there. Look for Southwest to try and take advantage of the flanks today. For Blue Valley West, we have heard Greenberg's out there. Rodez, Papula, Kuhlman, Christofferson, Ensley, Orcutt, Banker, Perry, Pittman, and Freeze on the field. And for the visitors, Sydney Beck is their goalkeeper. Vitha, Ruffalo, Hartwagger, Peak, Hicklin, their leading goal scorer, Forcellini, Gillis, Roof, Scheckinger, who's been moved to a center back, and Natalie Wilson. And this team is red hot. Blue Valley Southwest has won 10 straight. And Hugh, they uh, demolished Lansing in their last outing yesterday, 10 to nothing. While Blue Valley West playing yesterday lost at home to St. James Academy. We talked already uh, on the opening there about the importance of this game for both teams. Both teams, it's a rivalry. They, they play with and against each other in club soccer. But at the same time, too, they have to be a little smart, right? We come into the end of the regular season. Your postseason is just around the corner. Yeah, they want to win this game. Play for pride. But at the same time, they need to prepare for postseason play. And as far as the Eastern Kansas League is concerned, Blue Valley Southwest undefeated 7-0, and has won the league already. So head coach for Blue Valley West, the legendary Alex Amon in his 18th year, 32nd year overall, said we're playing for pride, and we got a lot of pride against a team that's right down the road from them. As here's Kuhlman working the right side. Good, enough, Mary. Keep it up. Good defense there by Good Callie there. Pittman. Or check that, that was uh, Hartwager. Orcutt first to the ball. Good work there by Orcutt, who's headed to UCM, but she's only a junior right now. Kevin, it's been a slight change in the formation here. I think Blue Valley West have been playing just one player up top, Papula. I think it's switched it today. They're going to play four in midfield and two up top, with Coleman being a little bit higher. They haven't scored enough goals this season, so the coaching staff, are, I think, are looking to ch change things up a little bit by playing that second forward up top. Yeah, they're trying to get it on the foot. As that's uh, Macy Ruffalo, who's... Uh, Outstanding player on the outside for them. A good player with lots of speed. So I think that's going to be the tactic for Southwest, though. Southwest will look to dribble down the middle, but pass outside. Grass field, a little heavy with these weather conditions. So they're going to be a little slower. And so look for them to try and penetrate through the outside. 
The scouting report on Southwest is they can score goals, but their back line is a little shaky. They made changes there, and their goalkeeper is an inexperienced keeper, a very athletic girl in Sydney Beck, also plays basketball for the Timberwolves. And she just looks like a good athlete in goal over there. Tall, long arms. Yeah, maybe a little raw, inexperienced soccer player, but certainly lots of potential to keep on improving. Foul on Orchid. I do think that defensive line, it's young, um, inexperienced as well, so they will be looking for that leadership in the back. It's that first foul of the game. Just got there a little late, so a little hip check foul there. Uh, nothing too malice, but you know, just really setting the tone for the game early on. This is Hart Wagger, their top goal scorers. Trying to get it on the foot of the speedy Macy Ruffalo, who's headed to University of Central Missouri. There's a good look at Macy. First team, all EKL and all state. And a tremendous player, and Hugh already mentioned, she's the speed on the outside. There have been four attacks now. Every one of them's gone to that side. So it's the pass from the middle, diagonal to the outside, and looking for Ruffalo to cut in on the outside with that pace. Ruffalo, five goals, four assists. Once again, this team red hot, 10 in a row, 13 and one. Their only loss was back in March to Shawnee Mission West. Since then, reeled off that hot streak. And this is a team that's trying to make it three straight in 5A. And of course, Blue Valley West trying to make it three straight state titles in 6A. These programs, Hugh, have produced a lot of college players. You take a look at Eric Jones, who's the new head coach there in his first year. And you showed me a picture. You've known Eric Jones since he was <laughs> a youngster. I think he was 14 in that photo that, that I sent you. Um, he, we, I, we actually went to Europe together. He played in a couple of tournaments in Portsmouth and Manchester, England. And 14 years old, and I kind of dug out the old photo the other day to show him. Eric Jones in his first year as head coach. Also been a head coach at Gardner Edgerton and Baser Linwood. The guy they call JP, Jason Pendleton stepped down. And Eric Jones takes over the boys and girls program at Southwest. As here's Papula, the dangerous one, 17 goals on the year, headed to Nebraska, chips it in, and oh, little fumble there, but back able to make the save. Yeah, the defense kind of recovered fast, but we've talked already, Papula is very dangerous with her back to goal. The pass came to her feet, then that's what she needs. Pass it to feet, but she was able to use her body to spin quickly, and we'll, we'll watch this one more time here. And again, she's so good with a ball to feet, allows the ball to go past, the ball's doing the work, and Credit the defense, so the defense came back in numbers, but she still got that shot off on target as well. So very dangerous back to goal, strikes the ball very well. And if your last name is sounds familiar, if you're a soccer aficionado, uh, her father here is a famous coach and was a famous player back in the day. Played for the Comets, played for the Nigerian national team, played in the Olympics and in the World Cup as well, Ben Papula. And we were able to meet him sprinting from our stand up back to the booth. Uh, uh, he's a, also a club coach right now. And very proud of his daughter who's headed to Lincoln, Nebraska to play for the Cornhusker women's soccer team. Gillis with the cross. And oh, nearly on the foot there of Hicklin, who's their leading goalkeeper, but her shot is blocked. And Greenberg comes away with it. Punt it down the field for Blue Valley West. So another attack on the, on the flanks on the outside. The contrast here, we see one team attacking down the middle and the other one coming on out wide. Coleman using her speed to get to the ball first. The T-Wolves able to recover. Now Coleman working the left side. She's gonna cross it, looking for Papula. Headed away there by Southwest. Defenders battle in the 18. Kuhlman going to take a shot and send it well wide. Oh, 
a quick look at this wide. Look at that nice cross fading away from the goalkeepers and the tenacity of the defense. The shot was on over there, and two di different defenders stepped in to block those shots. So on the other end, at the same time, now another cross comes in, and then the battle again. And the thing that stands out real quickly in this game, nice dribbling, Nick, got a space, but the numbers behind the ball. Papula puts it in. Blue Valley West on top, one to nothing. Her 18th goal of the year, 75th for her career, as she continues to dent the back of the net. Just when we were talking about pressure on each side of the field, we have the goal. So it's a goal kick over here, one in midfield. So that's when it win knows is huge. Papua sees the gap in between two defenders and just shows that calmness and the composure just to slot it into the corner. Just the calmness again opens up her body and just slots the ball to the side netting. Very calm, collected didn't rush at it, you know, that shows the experience of an actual goal scorer right there. 18th goal for Marissa. And now a fifth assist on the season for Lindsey Kuhlman, who sent that nice pass, and Sydney Beck really didn't have a shot. Let's take a look at Christofferson. She had a nice play on blocking that cross earlier by Southwest. She got shaken up in the Olathe South game. She left with a knee injury, so good to see her back in the lineup on the back line for Blue Valley West as we get Forcellini in for a corner for the Timberwolves. Forcellini, the All-State and All-EKL player, send an in-swinger in, and it's just partially knocked away there by Greenberg and then sent off the field by Pittman. The a throw in for Southwest. Okay, I love this corner kick. Whipped in with power, with pace, in swinger. Really testing the goalkeeper, forcing the goalkeeper to come out to make that little parry out of bounds over here. So again, a dangerous ball in the mixer, if you like, with bodies attacking it as well. So nice corner kick, whipped with power. So right now, we're not seeing any midfield player in this game. The ball's going through end to end. Both teams pride themselves in having the ability to play out of the back. Right now, they're bypassing that midfield and really going to what each offensive side to the field. That early change, that tactical change to play Coleman and Papula obviously, obviously has shown dividends early on. Both of them are creating all kinds of havoc with their speed, with their athletic strength as well. Both of them are a handful for the, these young defenders. And there's one of the switches. Carly Scheckinger, who's one of their most valuable players, who's normally a midfielder, she's playing on that back line to help their defense out. She's headed to Missouri State to play college soccer. Playing in the back because of an injury, but also kind of a good matchup as well. So you, you put a good player in, in the back with her. Um, just the, the, the experience, a little older player. And so playing against the, the matchup of our best player against your best player. And this is an important game for Carly Scheckinger. She spent one year at Blue Valley West before she transferred. And talking to the player, she was the one that said this is an important game to her as far as the rivalry is concerned. Here's Papula again, finding Kuhlman. And Porcellini just got a piece of it, but gonna deny this chance there. But tell you what, you, this Blue Valley West team is a confident team. They're playing on the front foot right now. Looking dangerous for sure. And I'm gonna be, a, just got the offside Man. ball over here. But I'm going to be a little tough on Papula here because she is such a good player. Papula's last chance, she's inside the box. The mentality, the idea was OK to make that pullback pass to a teammate. But as a coach, you would want her to have the mentality. You know what? This is my shot. This is my, I'm going to finish this. Right? And that's the mentality of a goal scorer that, that many coaches at her level will be looking for. The ARs today, John Burke and Andreas Georgiou. Working hard on this windy, cloudy, 60-degree day here in southern Johnson County. Here's Kuhlman again breaking free. Lindsey Kuhlman shoots, and she scores. Lindsey Kuhlman and Papula.
Pakula doing damage early in this one. Just said that Pakula should have held on to the ball in the last play. That was the perfect decision this time, though. She drew the defenders to her. The timing of the pass is what makes it. So watch this now. The ball is won. That's that little cut. Ball right at the defender. And really almost like a no-look pass. The penetrating pass inside the defenders for her teammate, Kuhlman. Again, showing that composure just to slot the ball in. So two similar finishes. One with the opened up body to slot it to the near post and the other one across the body to the far post. So one-on-ones with penetrating passes. So Blue Valley West looking dangerous. The combination of the two fo forwards are causing all kinds of problems back over there. And the assist was awarded to Papula. So they are doing some damage to this Southwest. Very youthful line. Uh, there's a lot of sophomores in the back line for Southwest, but they added Scheckinger to give them that experience that you mentioned. But this was the bugaboo about this team, the back line and their goalkeeping. And that's why Coach Amon thought his girls could get a few goals. Free kick awarded now to Scheckinger, who does all their set pieces. She's a left-footed, strong kicker here for the T-Wolves. And she curves it in. Greenberg will come out and make the play, headed to the University of San Francisco. So she's headed out west to study uh, digital communications. So Shawnee Mission uh, Southwest, here, Blue Valley Southwest, needs to kind of slow this game down a little bit, right? It's too hectic for them right now. They need to have some composure in midfield build the attack, string some passes together, just slow the tempo of the game so they can slowly get back into it. So string two or three passes. Greenberg, going to study that digital communications and advertising, going to be a student there. I think her family is moving out to San Francisco. She's allowed 11 goals on the year. She's going to come off her line and handle this one. She's one of the seven seniors they have on this Blue Valley West squad. Won a lot of games under Coach Amon. Here's Papula trying to set up Banker. Taken away nicely there by Scheckinger. Now sending it down the field, trying to get it to Letha. Good job by the back line for Blue Valley West. Nice ball by Fossolini. They saw that space over the top. A little looping pass over there. So yeah, this is what they need to start doing. Start to build that ball through the midfield, but also they, we'll, we'll see the shield over here, and then just a little flick pass over the top, the timing of it, and the goalkeeper did well, so we got to come out high. Porcellini's shot is blocked, good defense there by Peyton Carter. And now let's see if Papula's gonna counter here. Here's, and that's Scheckinger coming up there and denying Papula, Porcellini. Looking for Vita and the youngster there, Rodez. This is a young player, they say, is a freshman, but they didn't know what they were going to get. Izzy Foltz, who had surgery last week, is on the bench, and she had a uh, ACL injury, an MCL injury, and this Rodez girl has come in and given them some good minutes, maybe their most improved player. Yeah, coaching staff are very excited about how future really has stepped in in a, in a precious situation for them and done a very good job. Free kick, that's Gustafsson. Sister Shelby was a very good player here at Blue Valley West back in the day. Oh, there's a foul whistled on Peyton Carter as Burge hits the deck. And it'll be a free kick awarded to the Timberwolves. Back-to-back -back 5A championships. This team from the EKL is Field looking very good here. We want to say a great job by Mason McMurphy, who does the groundskeeping here at Blue Valley West. This is a natural grass surface. It's got a crown on it, but getting a lot of rain. Field this here Friday was pretty wet. We got rain on Monday. And it's just 
moved up two hours because of more rain is coming, but the field looks great. So tip your cap to Mason and the great job he does with getting the fields here. The baseball fields are also natural grass as well. Unbelievable facilities for, for these kids to play. And credit the ground staff to have this field in great condition for these girls to play. Southwest will have to be able to stop to pull again into these balls. It's not only stopping her while she's got it, but stop before she gets to it. Fortunately, can't get there, and it's Papula taking the shot and just set it wide. Papula is dominating right now early on. She is unstoppable, and young sophomore goalkeeper is getting pelted early on. Again, yeah, so there's three players around her that she still sees the space, gets the shot up to the far post, so tactically for Southwest, right? What do you do? She's a good player one-on-one. -on -one. How about we take away the passing angle? Have making sure she's not even receiving those passes. So maybe hold as a defensive midfield player right in front of her to take away any possession to her, any service to her. Here's Scheckinger. Midfielder now playing on the back line, headed out by Orchid. Lindsey Banker. Normally the Amen uh, method is to play a lot of possession, control the ball. And they'll get their goals with the likes of a Papula or had a number of very good scores. Ashley Cantrell was a big time scorer. You can ask Coach Amen. He says over the years I've had a lot of great players. And now here's Papula tipping it to Kuhlman, back off her line, able to get it before number nine, Kuhlman, can get her foot on it. Beck came, read the situation, came out fast, narrowed the angle, and just pounced on, on that ball. We'll, we'll see it one more time over here. Got behind the line. Look at these one-touch passes. There was four one-touch passes, got behind the line. Goalkeeper came out big for that one-on-one. -on -one. But credit again to West. They're finding it. They're getting behind the defensive line a little too easy. The coaching staff have to be nervous about that. We got a break in the action. You're watching the High V High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. Back here at the Blue Valley District Activity Center at Antioch. And early on, it's the home team, Blue Valley West, leading 2-0. And trying to get more here as the shot is taken and hits the crossbar. Whoa! Elena Sutton, another super freshman for Coach Amon's team. Nearly had a third goal on the board for the Blue Valley West girls soccer team. The energy, the speed, it's all going one way. Look at, look at this now. Decides to have a crack at it. Tall goalkeeper, she couldn't get to it, and luckily it smashes off that crossbar as well. But that penetrating run, though, right from midfield, the forwards, the Kuhlman is the one who started that off. Her energy and her strength up top, combined with Papula, is creating opportunities for themselves, but also for their teammates as well. Get it into the corner to Brooke Pelfrey and some good defense by the young freshman. That's Rodez. These ninth graders aren't afraid of anything. They get out there and they can play. Here you look at the young player, Sophie Rodez. Injury to Izzy Foltz, tore ACL. And number six has come in and done a great job for them. That's the pass that Southwest have to get rid of. They need to build out of there, because that's just giving an opportunity for that fast transition counter attack as well. Good job by Roof. Once again, trying to get it down the right flank to Pelfrey, a sophomore. And the young freshman will knock it out and will have a corner awarded to Southwest. Going back to the bread and butter, if you like, want to penetrate, want to beat the line on the outside is what Southwest did. They think they have the advantage in one-on-one -on -one situation on the flanks. And coming down for the set piece, as always, is Callie Scheckinger headed to Missouri State. Left-footed in-swinger. 
putting lots of pressure on the goalkeeper here. Wait! Ball oh, is oh, oh. got on the head of Hicklin, but not much on that header. Let's see if West can get a counter out of this. Instead, they'll get a foul by Liv Emsley. The name sounds familiar. She is the granddaughter of Harold Ensley, the fisherman's friend. That ball just went whipped in into the six-yard box again. Need more white jerseys attacking that ball. Though. Southwest kind of watched it in there. Need to attack it. Bodies, the you know, ball's floating in the box. Get two or three players after it. This is within the range for Callie Scheckinger. And Greenberg to her left. Takes that low worm burner. And able to scoop it up and keep the sheet clean. But Greenberg made that look a little easier than it actually was. So that ball is coming off of some grass field over there. And a little, little skate and a very confident. And we got Papua attacking again. Boy, that's all we've seen through the first half. Nice save by the sophomore keeper back. And the return shot is handled on the near post by Sydney Beck. How about Beck, right? One-on-ones galore happening over here, getting these opportunities. Oh, and not a lot of midfield play again. Really quickly got behind, beats one player, and then all four are beaten. And then keeper comes out very quickly, right? And narrows down the angle. And here comes Papula again. Scheckinger cutting her off. challenge for that Southwest defense now. Can you kind of balance your, your shape a little bit? It's a little bit too much in straight lines. We need one in for the tackle and one in for the cover. It needs to be one defender extra behind the first tackler every single time. Because Kuhlman and Papula are getting behind him a little too easy at the moment. Roof able to take it away for Southwest. Lexi also plays tennis. Move from a midfielder to a Outside back for the squad. Change for her. Orcutt, very skilled player. She was out actually scouting, watching Southwest play on the road at Bishop Miege last week. So, wow, that takes some dedication to go watch your uh, future opponent. Here's Kuhlman. Got her shot blocked, and we got a foul coming up on Blue Valley West. Didn't get, a shot, didn't get a shot on target, but again, Kuhlman, though, there's showing that tenacity, that determination. You know, she, she looks like a tough, physical physical player that's gonna keep on going at you. And watch this now, she really had no right of winning that ball, really. Defender should have got there, used her body to get, get the ball and look to get that cross. Credit the defense, they did get back. Kind of silly foul to give away there in the attacking box. Foul was on Peyton Carter of West. Let's see if the T Wolves can get something going. Here's Hicklin who leads them in goal scoring with seven. Feeding ahead to Pelfrey trying to use her speed, but the freshman is too fast. Rodez gets there first. Rodez too fast, but also showing you know that calmness just to use her goalkeeper. Didn't panic, didn't try to knock it anywhere out of bounds. Used that, that goalkeeper's right there, made the simple option. Like I said, these ninth graders seem to have no fear when Izzy Foltz tore ACL, and I see Izzy there. She's on the bench in a wheelchair, and it's kind of sad to see it, but we wish her all the best and a speedy recovery. She had surgery last Friday. So we see some substitutions check in. Anna Perry, there you see the uh, Izzy right there, cheering on her teammates. Speedy recovery, even giving some little insider tips to the back, younger players. Is he a junior defense player? Father Joe does a great job of helping this program out as well. Anna Perry's father, John, is with the Sporting Kansas City Academy. So yeah, he's the, the head he's of the, the big guy, yeah. He's done a fantastic job with that program. The academy was voted as the best academy last season in the whole league. Kuhlman to Popola. When have we said that? All first half. This is uh, Pittman on the outside. Takes the shot, and it hits the roof. No goal. And it slipped across by even again. Right now, 
Kevin, I would say the Southwest will take this score 2 0 because it easily could be 3, maybe 4 0 at this up point right now. Watch this. I think it might have been there. Maybe it'll just a little bit over the top. That is Callie Pittman, sophomore, sister Alexa is headed to Johnson County Community College. Callie also a basketball player, but those two up front players, uh, Papula and Kuma, have been dominating. They have both the goals. West leading here early in the battle of the back-to-back -back state champions. Frustrating moment there for Coleman, and she'll laugh it off, but uh, hey, she's had a great first half. It's okay, nobody noticed. <laughs> Just the TV camera, maybe. Yeah. Don't worry, Lindsay, it's it's on TV. Oh, and now we're gonna make it worse by showing it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's and trying to set up the cross here, oh. and whoops. She's had a tremendous first half. Yep. You just move on, right, Hugh? Move on to the next thing. I think she's okay with the way this game's going right now. Here's Hicklin. Ruffalo. Forcellini can't get it on her foot. They need to get the Ruffalo and Forcellini going here as they're two of their dominant eating players. But give credit to the Jaguars back line. They're doing a great job. And the tempo of the game seems a little too fast for Southwest at the moment. They're, they're a little rushed. They have not been able to you know, string passes together. Their only thought right now is to try and get the outside players going with you know, those long, longish diagonal passes behind the outside backs. So I, I really do believe they need to string passes in through the defense to the midfield and just try and catch them off balance before making that long diagonal pass. Coming over to throw it in. Looks like Taylor Gillis, junior defender. Burge will leave the lineup. Seniors, the seven seniors of this squad for Blue Valley West. That is Ashlyn Atchison. Once again, if you're unfamiliar with high school soccer, the girls can just freely substitute in. So, and the foul is committed by Ensley. That's her second as Forcellini hits the deck hard. So Second foul, maybe me. By Ensley, yeah. yeah, but, but by saying Ensley, five on the team. Yeah, um, but I don't think they're playing nasty soccer. I think no. they're playing fast soccer. But well, the one thing about that tackle, though, and that foul is very similar to the first one. Kind of leaves a hip in there for that hip check a little too long. Gotta be careful with that. If that happens again, probably a yellow card coming. Here's Papula trying to get through all those white shirts there. Can't do it. Marley Milner in the game for Southwest. Both these teams played yesterday, so we expect the full rosters to go. There are all the girls that are healthy, and here's the Ruffalo speed. Now the cross. Oh, good work there. Coming back was Atchison, still alive. Hicklin didn't get all of that, and Zoe Greenberg makes the save for Blue Valley West. So the success has been coming on the left-hand side. That's where they're getting most of their success. So let, you know, if you're uh, southwest, you've got to be thinking about how can we feed that speed. Look at that ball. It got her hips around it, put the ball in the danger area. It's a good ball in. The players attacking it as well. Here is Ellie Schramm, the senior, trying to find Coolman. Oh, just missed her. Valley West keeping it in the offensive third, and now we've got a whistle and a foul coming up on Southwest, and a dangerous free kick coming for the Jaguars. Yeah, dangerous position over here. I think it might be a little far out for a shot, maybe on time. Yeah, they moved it further back than I thought. Let's see if they're going to move it up a little bit. Yes, they are. So just float this in between the goalkeeper, right? In between the goalkeeper and the last line of defense. So we look at the foul real quick. So what, what happens here? Look at the twist. It's that twist in midair. Right. 
Foul was on Forcellini, and nice save on the free kick by Beck to her left. Yeah, so she did decide to shoot at it and really test the keeper with that long shot. And players, again, though, the difference is players were following up on that shot. Gillis. Good ball. Trying to get it outside now to Ruffalo, and Orkut comes over with the defense. And good work by Orkut. Yeah, good, two good tackles by Orkut, Greg. Got a body in position. We'll see that free kick one time. I thought it was going to be a little too long, but she did smash it on target. Goalkeeper parries it out. Look at the number of players, though, following it. Almost like a basketball player, right? The defense is trying to box out, and the offense is there for the rebound. Orkut leads the team in assists, but she's a very good defender, and she is a high soccer IQ girl. She was the one out with her teammates scouting this team. Wanted to see them in action. I'm sitting in the front row at Bishop Miege and watching Southwest come from a 2-2 lockup at halftime and win that 4-2. I asked her, I said, what were you doing out there? I'm just scouting. I know a lot of those girls and just wanted to see one of our future opponents. But that, and she knew what she's playing outside back today. Probably to match up with the pace uh, of Ruffalo, but you know, she can play midfield. Scored a ton of goals last season. Was really a, a threat to score all of last season. This year, a little bit more of the assist type player, but it's such an adaptable player now moving back for this one game for that matchup. I said, what did you see in your uh, scouting report? I said, uh, well, she said, Macy Ruffalo, very fast on the outside. Porcellini is tough in the middle there. Peak had a good game that night, but uh, she gave a good scouting report. Yeah, but I got the feeling, though, that she might have known all of that before. Well. <laughs> These kids have known each other. I know it wasn't a social call old. for her. She <laughs> was there. Uh, she was watching intently. Uh, I didn't see a notebook in, in her jotting in her, her scouting yeah, report notebook or anything like that. But uh, she just loves to play soccer, going to UCM. She said the UCM coach might even be here tonight because He's got a number of recruits playing for both these squads. Coach Theobald there in Warrensburg. Who's done an unbelievable job, right? Won a national championship already over there. Marquette will send it back into the box. Like it was hip checked out of there. And now Hartweger looking to send a long ball down the field for Lauren Peak. A good ball, too. Peak needs to hold on to this now, wait for that support to come and help him. Working against Christofferson. Good work by Christofferson. Alexis able to knock it away. Christofferson's a good player. Good, solid player. Tough to beat in one-on-one -on -one situations. Pula down the field to Pittman. Ball is deflected. Defender is able to do a good job of denying Pittman there. But again, that back line, that was the question mark that we talked about that they have struggled this year. A lot of inexperience, inexperienced keeper. And West able to take advantage. Goals by Papula and Kuhlman thus far. It's just over four to play before Hyvee at the half. Numbers and highlights as you're watching girls EKL soccer here on the Hyvee High School Game of the Week on Spectrum Sports. Foul on the Jaguars and a free kick awarded to Blue Valley Southwest. Already won the EKL this year, undefeated in EKL play. 7-0, they've won 10 straight, but on the ropes right now against their rivals from down the street, Blue Valley West. So last three and a half minutes of this half, you know, if Southwest could Keep it 2-0, I think they'll go, they'll be okay with that. If they can sneak a goal, they'll be ecstatic with that to get back to 2-1 before the end of this half. But you almost kind of like want to weather the storm, if you like, because second half, let's turn things around now, regroup a little bit. You know, tactically, the coaches can switch some positions, but really to keep the game within distance for the rest of this half, that's the, that's the goal going into it for the last two and a half minutes or so. Throw in for Ruffalo, finds Lauren Peak. Back to Ruffalo, send it into the box. Ball still active, Forcellini can't get to it though as Schrammel sent it down the field. Roof there to cut off the progress. 
to see a little more confidence by Southwest, but worried, Hugh, that the halftime uh, break might take some of that sting away from them as they've been playing better, as you said. Here's Ruth. Look at that determination by Ruth. She's won three balls right after each other there. I think they're still forcing that diagonal pass, though. It's not always on. They need to catch them off balance first. Anna Phillips trying to send it down the field. She's a sophomore. She's a girl with some skills. We'll get some minutes. Kevin, we saw the difference defensively there. We saw one player in, in the defensive in front of Papua, and then the cover player behind her. That depth in defense is a must the second half. down the field. Megan Freeze getting some time. Another one of those super ninth graders for our coach Amon. He's done a great job, won six state titles with the girls and three for their boys program. Here's Vita trying to find Peak and it goes right through the six yard box and nobody can get a foot on it. Forcellini will take a shot, Rodez with the block. Pittman will chase down the loose ball for West, but the Ruffalo showing off that great speed. Boy, Macy is fast. You blink and she's right on you. So Southwest are clawing themselves back in this game. There's been a couple of chances now. That ball going in in the last minute would have really watched this ball again. So what's the determination is tackle. Boom, get in there, winning the ball. Now a head goes up. Where's the teammates? Slots it back there. Oh, hey. wow. Lauren Peak was the intended target on that cross, but not able to take advantage of one of the T-Wolves as we get a foul. And it's going to be on Southwest. Free kick now for Orca as she sends it down the field for Blue Valley West. As we wind down the first half, dominated by the home team, Blue Valley West. Last year, it was Southwest winning. They went 19-0-1 en route to their 5A championship. So Blue Valley West playing for pride. And showing a lot of pride. Goals from Papula and Kuhlman both also adding assists to each other's goals. And your halftime score is 2-0. Blue Valley West. And coming back with High V at the half. You're watching the High V High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. <laughs> Hi V at the half for you in girls EKL soccer. It's Blue Valley West leading 2-0 over Blue Valley Southwest in the battle of the back-to-back -back state champions. Let's get to your high V first half highlights here and the team in red and black dominating early. Yeah, Blue Valley West and this play in particular, Pupula having a very strong, we saw her there getting the shot up. Watch this over here now, winning the ball, Benka in middle, that's an important header right there. Great little pass, touch inside, two defenders, and then boom, open your, sh over your hips up and just slot it in to the side of the goalkeeper. And Papula now finds Kuhlman. The other player gives the, the assist to the teammate. And again, one on one, just the goalkeeper to, to beat. Calmness, coolness again. Strength, power, determination, getting, watch the shot. Doesn't miss by a lot, just inches wide. So that's been the story of this first half. These two players, Kuhlman, Papula, watch Sutton here, midfield player now joining the attack and smashing it against the crossbar. Free kick. You know, the goalkeeper handles this. And that looks a little easier than this, especially on the wet field. Pace by Ruffalo. This is the danger player. A lot of pace there. Ball whipped in nicely, coming away from the goalkeeper. But only two players in the box just couldn't convert. Really couldn't get a hips around that ball in the end. There you look at the high V first half numbers. Anything stand out for you, Hugh? Yeah, shots on goal 5-3. I thought I would have thought it was way more than that, right? The, the domination has been there. There's been five shots on 
on goal, three by Southwest, but it really doesn't tell the story of the dominance on that first half. Southwest started to claw themselves back into the game late, but really dominated there, but they weathered the storm perhaps. The second half might be the opportunity now for Southwest to make some tactical decisions, stop the service to Papua. They've got to drop a midfield player so that she doesn't get that ball and really build to the midfield, not go wide so quickly. A little bit more patience in the attack before they go to Ruffalo. Second half is coming up next. You're watching the High V High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. Ready for the start of the second half. Kevin White, Q. Williams, girls EKL soccer. This game got pushed up a couple hours due to rain in the forecast. But this natural grass field is uh, Holding up very nicely, and the home team doing well, 2-0. What should we expect here in the second half, especially for uh, Southwest, if they want to get back in this one? Well, Southwest, first of all, a little bit more patience in attack, build to the midfield, but more importantly, defensively, take out the service. Take out the passing ang angles for this player harassing right there. Marissa Papula, she, they got to take away the possession. And the, right next to Papula, Kuhlman has been showing all kinds of energy and intensity with her speed and strength as well. So they got to take away the service to the folks. Lauren Peake is fouled right at the midfield stripe. Free kick for Scheckinger. And Blue Valley Southwest, Scheckinger headed to Missouri State, study advertising and interactive media. Jones called her one of the most coachable girls he's ever coached. The senior will send it down the field with his left foot. Peak able to head it, but the player Hicklin is offsides and she missed the mark anyway. All seemed to take forever to get to it. She was waiting and waiting and waiting for it. I just eventually got there, and by the time I got the ball got there, she was offside. Uh, the foul before that came from Perry, though. Well, watch Perry in midfield for Blue Valley West. You know, not the fastest player, the most athletic player, but very smart, tactical player. She, you know, makes players around her better. Good work by Roof. Hicklin, Scheckinger, Forcellini trying to turn. Now to Scheckinger. Outside to Ruffalo. Good work by Orcutt again, coming over and able to knock it away. What a battle there between Orcutt and Ruffalo. Two excellent players, both headed to UCM. Yeah, the battle continued afterwards with Hartwagger stepping in to win the loose ball. Already a better start. There's a different mentality here for, for Southwest. Here's Papula with space. This is dangerous. Trying to get it to Kuhlman, and nice work by Wilson coming up to deny that little uh, exchange. So we talked about that in the first, having the, defender, the defenders cover each other. One in for the tackle, and if that player gets past you, then the second player comes in to cover for to help each other. So support and depth in the back. For Cellini, sending it to the outside. That's a Ruffalo ball, but she pulled up on her run. But they've got Orchid out there. Uh, that's her assignment, stopping number three in white, and she's done a good job thus far because Ruffalo is an excellent player, an all-state player for Southwest. Here's Forcellini with the takeaway, and the Lillelli West thought there was going to be a foul, and they kind of stopped playing, and Forcellini not able to advance. Here's Hartwagger, Scheckinger, Scheckinger, Lauren Peake back to Scheckinger. Good work there by Carter to knock it away. Kuhlman, Papula, saying that a lot. Sending it out of play is Taylor Gillis, but Southwest starting to find some offensive momentum here. Looking better for sure. Having the confidence to play a little bit out of the back, through the midfield, stringing passes together. Much better by Southwest. But after saying all that, the counter is always oh, on, yeah. right? That transition, 
from defense to offense that West has shown. It's the quickness to move from midfield to up top. Watch out for that nine, seven, and red and black counterattack. That could be lights out for Southwest. Already trailing 2-0 as Horkett from near midfield going to send the long ball down the sidelines. Wilson able to beat Kuhlman to that ball, but Kuhlman nearly took it away. And they will say a throw in for the Jags as Kuhlman just too fast. Showing some great wheels as a goal in the first half. <laughs> Trying to get it to Papula on the throw in as she battles Roof. Whistle oh. and a foul on Blue Valley West. So Kevin, not a, you know, a big deal here, but back there, that's what the throw, throwing came in just before all of this. Back, you know, the, the inexperience of playing in goal, really her communication needs to be a little bit better. Talk to her, to the defenders, making sure she knows that ball's not gonna go out of bounds, making sure that they're organized and in position. But showing a little bit that that, that experience and that having the maturity to, to make that communication will come with experience next season and so on. So valuable experience for, for her this year. So we look to her to constantly get better though. Foul on Mary Hartweger, who's headed to play soccer at KU. Freshman Rodez working the sideline. A throw in now for Rodez and Blue Valley West. Right to Papula trying to turn. There's a great skills the soccer ball headed to the University of Nebraska. She wants to become a veterinarian. Here's Ruffalo going long ball looking for Pete Pittman back there and she'll send it out of play and that's a long way out of play when it went over the grandstand. Let's take a look at Lauren Peak. She's the player, they, they're number nine. She's the speed girl. She plays with a lot of tenacity, never seems to tire. Here's Ruffalo. Ruffalo on the outside. She gets that cross in. She does. Oh, still loose. Here's Hicklin going to try to tee it up. Shoots, and a one hopper handled by Zoe Greenberg. Ruffalo, the danger player, constantly getting behind again. Watch this again. She gets that left foot, whips it back. Maybe Hicken just a little too casual there, maybe. That had some time to get that shot off a little bit sooner. Wanted it on the left foot, perhaps, but needs to be a little bit more determined, a little bit more energetic on that first, first touch. Good defense there by Roof to knock it free. Scheckinger, always oh, a high skill player. Out to Forcellini. The big guns are starting to come out. The Scheckingers, the Ruffalos, the Forcellinis. Should be an interesting second half. Here's Forcellini. Forcellini against Christofferson. She got by her. Now she'll go for a cross. Nobody there. Shot. Oh, missing the mark. Hicklin says it was touched. And the officials disagree. Jaylee's saying it was touched by a Blue Valley West player. They say goal kick instead. Yeah, danger coming now again on the left hand side. Different player this time though. Forcellini this time on the wide position. Gets past Christofferson, whips that ball across. A little flat there maybe in terms of numbers. All three forwards on the straight line. A little more depth needed, but perhaps the difference, perhaps the difference. Scheckinger has moved from defense into midfield now, so her and Forcellini are working well together to create these opportunities. Mark Wegger. Hartwegger, very confident on the ball. Look at its strength, body, very good athlete. Needs to keep possession there, though. He's trying to find Lauren Peake. Here's Wilson battling Kuhlman. And good job by Wilson to get it away from number nine there. Natalie Wilson, one of the center backs, sophomore. Coming up is Orcutt with the throw in, number 12. 
shot was Anna Perry and go off a Timberwolf for a corner. Natalie Wilson took the brunt of Anna Perry, the senior forward shot there. Yeah, and that's what we just talked about. It's the timing of a run. People are standing, there's no support on the throw-in, but all of a sudden she appears behind the line over there. So just a smart, intelligent runner, good play. Corkut on the corner, good ball here. And a whistle and a foul in the box on Blue Valley West. A little harsh, I, I didn't see the foul there. The ball is floating and she's got all the right and the will to go after that. So referee saw something that we didn't. So as this ball comes in, oh, nice, nice floating ball back post. Not seeing the foul, still not seeing yeah. it myself. Well, I was calling it on Anna Perry against Forcellini. And now midfield foul free kick for Forcellini. She wants to go quickly, trying to get it to Ruffalo with that speed on the outside. And she's not that fast. You know what was going on there? Damn, she's gonna, Perry was trying to slow the play down, standing right in front of it. Very professional, tactical. Gamesmanship. And maybe Forcellini was trying to smack the ball against her. And missed her. her. Went out of bounds, so she was looking for the, for the yellow card there a little bit. Scheckinger working the midfield now. This is an important move. She's so good on the ball. Forcellini. Forcellini. Great work by Orcutt. Dispossessing her, but Forcellini always goes back to it. And now in space, Megan Freeze. The outside, Ensley. Ensley going long ball looking for Papula, but Roof there to deny that. Roof has done a good job. She's a feisty player on that back line. They're very young and inexperienced, but they do play hard. Greenberg well off her line. Comes out to boot it down the field. Ruffalo there. Ruffalo gets back on the ball. Macy will find Scheckinger. What a difference in this mid midfield now. Scheckinger's really making a difference in the, the combination in midfield. The, the finding each other, making more passes. We didn't see that the whole first half. She is making a big difference, so that's a very good coaching decision by Jones. Greenberg did not get all of this punt down the field, and Scheckinger right there at midfield has it back for Southwest in white. The visitors here won this game last year, won back-to-back -back 5A state championships on a 10-game winning streak, a trailing 2-0, but you can see this is the team that has a heart of a champion, Hugh. They're really trying to battle back in this game. Forcellini gonna take a, a shot. Oh, well, actually, it went wide, but Hicklin tried to volley it in and sent it wide for a goal kick for West. Hicklin has had three opportunities already in this first half, second half. She's getting to the position. That's a midfield player getting on the end of crosses. That's, again, intelligent running off the ball. So Hicklin now, yeah, she hasn't finished him yet, but she's getting that. She's getting into good positions. No, if that was a cross or a shot on a, a bender by Forcellini, but it looks like on second to viewing that, that was more of a cross for Hicklin. Forcellini can shoot the long ball. She had a nice long range goal last week against Bishop Miege. She had the brace in that 4-2 win. It's a good ball right wide. Working it into the box. Trying to get it to Lauren Peak. Some good work there by Vitha. But it comes up empty again for the T-Wolves who continue to pressure. There's Vitha again. See where a cross goes. The danger ball again. Wow. Greenberg able to make the save. Credit Greenberg for a good save. That's a danger ball. We'll see the first one here now. So a couple of opportunities. That's speed to get around the outside. Whips the ball, it's begging to be tapped in. Open goal, foul post, and then we see another one right after it. Same side again. Ball gets a different type of cross, not a low one. That's not an easy ball for a goalkeeper at this level to handle. Greenberg again making it look easy. Forcellini showing some skill. How about Forcellini in this, that whole midfield already? Forcellini, Scheckinger really dominating the midfield right now. I think she was trying to team up with uh, Ruffalo there. And they're a lethal combination here on the near side. But still haven't scored. Nice play by Ruth. Well, center backs gamble a lot, and they can be taken advantage of. Let's 
see if Wes is able to do that. Looking for Schramm on that long ball on the far side will be a Southwest throw in. Still plenty of time in this game for Southwest. Scheckinger showing off her great ball skills. Now for Cellini. For Cellini trying to get to Lauren Peak. Pitma with some good defense. She's able to knock that ball down. Chest. The anticipation when she stepped in. As soon as that ball was played, Pittman was right on it in the middle, not reacting after the pass was made. She was there as the pass was going in midair. Hartweger for Cellini. Back to Hartweger, who can score goals for this team. Stringing passes, though, Kevin. Now they're combining well with each other. What a battle here between Ruffalo and Orcutt. Wow. Okay, a couple so of future college teammates. For sure. Isn't Orcutt kind of... Gives you the feeling she's the heart and soul of this team. That's the, the, the tenacity that this team wants from her. Pete Scheckinger outside Ruffalo. Macy. Get it done. Good ball. Kind of loop one in. It's an easy save there for Zoe Greenberg. And the header down the field. Papula coming up. Papula comes away with it again. Now to Pittman on the outside. And we've got a whistle and is it a foul on? Uh, handball. Oh, handball. Beg your pardon. Man in the middle is Jared Mosier in green there. Calls the handball and a free kick. Workout will come up the field. And she will have the free kick. Does she go on goal here? Does she set up a teammate here, Hugh? Well, I said she's going to set up teammates last time, but she, she, surely she's going to float this back post. And she's going for the teammates there. As, trying to get it to Kuhlman. And let's see if Southwest can get a counterattack going to Lauren Peake. Nice work by Christofferson coming over and knocking it out of play. There's Alexis. She's headed to UCM. Another UCM player. You've talked a little bit about her injury this season. She's coming from two ACLs. Right. So that's a bit, that's a soccer family to start off with. She's done very well this school. The oldest sister, Reese, played at the Arkansas Division I, was a four-year starter over there. So a big soccer family in Kansas City. She had with Shelby, too. I, I mean, they've had a lot of sisters roll through there. I think she played partially at UMKC. UMKC, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I saw Alexis. Yeah, you see the scar on her knee, and then in the late the South game, she got kind of rolled up from behind and set out the rest of the way. But good to see her back out there. Free kick now for Scheckinger for Southwest. Here's the left footer. Trying to find Peak, gets it to Hicklin. A lot of red and black there. And Jag's able to handle that uh, offensive flurry by Southwest. Hartwager off Pittman, throw in for the T-Wolves. Here's Hartwager to Lauren Peake, the number nine. Outside Ruffalo, or cut right there. Those two are going at it, for sure. Um, stating the obvious here, Kevin, next goal's huge, right? West gets the next goal, this game is over. Game on though, Southwest gets the ball. And this is what you don't want to see if you're Southwest. Papula in space. And Papula finds Kuhlman. Now the center backs come over and knock it out. And it'll be a corner for Blue Valley West. There's the speed of Kuhlman who has a first half goal. Danger play right here. Combining well with a, with a fellow forward. That pace right there, she's just a dynamic forward. Knocks it out, though, for a goal kick. Sydney Beck has given up two first half goals. Seeing her back line playing a lot better. As here's Kuhlman again, working against Wilson. Knocks it off her leg, throw in for the Jags. Here comes Orchid up the field to do the honors. Andrea, a junior, 
Leads the team in assists, all state, all EKL, headed to Warrensburg and UCM. She's one of those high soccer IQ girls, but really loves playing. You should see her on the sidelines with her teammates. She is just so happy as crossed by Papula. Somebody there on the far post. Let's see if they can work it up. Peak. Trying to find Pelfrey, but Orcutt back again. She's everywhere, Hugh. She is. She's is that, throwing it in and sprinting back and playing defense. It's that determination, right? It just seems like, you know, the passion that she has for her team and her teammates. And the foul on Blue Valley West. And Atchison free kick Southwest. Ashland Atchison, the junior. Free kick for Scheckinger. for Peak, Christofferson, nice header there. For that goal to come from Southwest, I think Peak needs to have more support. She's kind of been left all alone in the middle there too often. So the, the support has to come from the midfield players. Maybe, maybe within the next five minutes or so, gamble time for Southwest to move people up. We see the collision right here from the back. With determination, two players going in for it. Orchid against showing that tenacity. She got the foul call. She don't like it either. She don't like the foul. The, the fact that they called that against them. That's that, you know, the competitiveness of that player. Scheckinger. Hicklin. And flag is up. Flag came up immediately for offside there. Good ball in. Kind of waiting for that ball in the box, though. The white jerseys are waiting on instead of stepping into that ball. Just a quick deflection there catches the defense off balance, but reacting to the ball instead of anticipating and forcing the play to happen. Stofferson. And we'll wait for her kick. We'll take a timeout here in the second half as you're watching the Ivy High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. Second half action. The visitors doing a lot of dominating in the midfield and the offensive third. Change in momentum. Little tactical decision moving players around. The midfield for Southwest has been in command. Beck needs more support though. She's been left by herself. More midfield players, so support down the middle there. And Hicklin get into good positions. Wide in midfield, not getting shots on target. It was from Hicklin, but other players are joining. A very different second half. Speed is different, determination is certainly there. And we got an opportunity here for Southwest. Vita. Good work by the freshman Rodez with the defense for Blue Valley West. As much as the team in white has been dominating the second half, they have not got any goals and still trail two to nothing here as we've got just under 19 to play in this girls EKL game as we're in the second half. Phillips. Now they're working the outside, Hicklin. And they were trying to get Vitha down the right flank be run down though instead by Pittman. There's Schramm. Goes out of play, last touch by Southwest. And there is Rodez who's done a good job on that back line for Blue Valley West. Done a real good job back there. Really has worked hard. Not attacking a lot from back there, but still very solid in 1v1 defender position. But this is a challenge, Kevin, for, for Southwest now. You, you're two goals down, got to gamble a little bit, but the more you push up, push defenders forward, the more you expose yourself for that counterattack for the two fast forwards up top. And so, do you, how much do you gamble and leave Coleman and Papula by themselves? Scheckinger trying to find Pelfrey, but Orkut right there. Back to the keeper, Greenberg. Hartweger trying to keep it in the offensive end for Southwest. Good work there by Elena Sutton. 
now. Here's Megan Freeze to Sutton. Sutton hit the crossbar in the first half. See her skills. Hartwegger. It's headed out of play by Sutton. And we a throw in for Southwest. And you see the freshman, Elena Sutton. Goals on the year. Borsellini trying to find Pelfrey. Might have got uh, Wynn aided out of bounds there. Be a throw in for Blue Valley West. Scheckinger battling with Atchison. Atchison comes away with it. Atchison between two defenders. And nice work by Hartweger. Trying to find Kuhlman, and as you see, uh, Southwest flying around, bodies hitting the deck, and a foul. Let's see where it was. And it's going to be in the box, so a PK coming up as Kuhlman got hit hard here, and she hits the deck. Foul is called on Roof, and we'll have one from the spot here as Roof, you know what? She's an aggressive player. That's her style. I don't fault her. I mean, she's been flying around here. Not a fault at all, but credit Coleman. Though. What the change? In, it's the cut. It's the change of direction at speed is what did it. Papula will take the penalty kick here. There's the whistle. And Papula with her second goal of the game, and that might do it. 3-0 Blue Valley West. A huge goal, makes a big difference. Should be game set a match now. They gotta manage the rest of the game. But Papula again showing confidence. Didn't go too wide with it, but very similar to the goal that she scored in the flow of the game, in that she opened up and and slotted it in with the inside of a foot with it. Open her hips and just really passed it into the goal. So that is goal number 19 on the year for Papula. And goal number 76 for her career. She's one of the all-time leading scorers, and that was the big one. The next goal, Hugh Williams said, would be a, a difference maker. Let's go back to the foul. Kuhlman taken down by Roof. Watch the cut. It's that cut there, and then there's a cut the opposite direction right there. So that, that's tough to defend that. Change direction at speed. And then watch this. Open up the hips and just a pass to the side. Not wide enough, maybe, but it was, you know, the, the deception was enough to take, take the goalkeeper the wrong way. Valley Southwest in big trouble here. Yes. They get it on the foot of Papula again. Headed to the University of Nebraska. Marissa working against Hartwagger, trying to turn the corner on Mary. Now she'll cross it in. Ball still alive or cut. Fires the shot, handled nicely by Sidney Beck as Orchid maybe scuffed that one a bit. Yeah, but Orchid, who has been outstanding in the right back position, is now playing up top. So she, she, as well as she's been doing in defense, they pushed it up. Watch the ball though, watch the pass that comes into her. To pull her strength, hips around it, pull it outside so a midfield players can attack it. Just didn't, that, that's some thick grass, right? The qual quality of the grass right there. She wasn't able to get the power in the shot though. That's a good ball right there too. Christofferson. Right there, handles it nicely and sends it away. Yeah, positioning. That 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 was a tough ball to handle, but a body position. She was there early and able to clear it out for safety without any real pressure. Hartwegger will throw it in. Her mom went to Mizzou. Her dad went to law school at Mizzou. She's going to KU. Think there's a problem at home? A little bit. As checking in the lineup is Marley Milner, senior midfielder for Southwest. Southwest and Forcellini. Forcellini. The outside, Pelfrey. All knocked out by the hustling Christofferson. Who's wide? 
Hartwager. Finds for Cellini, drawing the defenders. Now to the far post on the cross. Pittman heads it out. Orcutt trying to get a quick break going there. Not going to go, so Pittman will send it out of play. It'll be a Southwest throw in on the side as we're just over 13 to play here in the second half. It's been all Blue Valley West playing for pride. Yes, offsides is the call on Southwest. Blue Valley Southwest has won the league. When Coach Amon was confident his girls would come out here and play with pride because of the rivalry and the closeness of these two teams, and they have. You know, Blue Valley West talking to Amon and the coaching staff before the game, they felt they've played well all season, but really don't feel like they scored enough. If this team can be very, if they play like this in the postseason, maybe they found something in this new formation. Playing the 4-4-2 for the first time this season with that diamond midfield, maybe that's the secret. Combining those two strong, fast players up top, that's going to be a handful for a lot of teams for sure. Well, Coach Amon, as you look at his uh, coaching resume, you see all those state titles. He kind of said an interesting quote to me. As you take a look at Coach Jones, Coach Amon said to me that he said it's almost easier to win a state title than it is an EKL title, and that's how loaded the Eastern Kansas League is. Uh, you got all those teams, uh, the Blue Valleys, Bishop Miege, the Mill Valley, just, uh, just the, so many uh, good squads. You got a unbelievable squads, right? But. The secret to that is the level of soccer in Kansas City. Female soccer, girls soccer in Kansas City is at a, if you're a good player here in Kansas City, you're a good player, period. So there's good school programs, good club programs, coaches galore, ex-pros like Ben Papula who have stayed in Kansas City coaching youth soccer as well. So we're developing a lot of high-level players here in Kansas City. Yeah, I wasn't even done yet. We coach Ewing for St. Thomas Aquinas sit here scouting this game. His program has been a, a dominant program for both boys and the girls and St. James Academy. So here's Forcellini. Every night in this league, you're gonna have a tough game. So like Coach Amon said, sometimes it's easier to win a state championship than it is an EKL championship. And he's probably got more of those state crowns than the girls a half dozen. But both of these programs, right? Both ever since Southwest even became a program over there. This has been their battle. This has been the rivalry game. This has shown, showcased so many high level players. And there's a reason why a lot of these players are going to college. There's a reason why we got college coaches watching this game right now. After saying all of that, how important this game is for them, yeah, they want to win it. Pride has been mentioned multiple times today. But at the same time, though, they're getting ready for postseason, too. That's the important part for, for these programs, too. Hicklin back in, Forcellini out. Southwest trails. 3-0 here as we go under 10 minutes to play in regulation. Teams won 10 in a row. They're 13 and one. Their lone loss back in March to Shawnee Mission West. They've been dominant, but uh, taking on the back-to-back -back 6A state champs on 6A state champs home field here. Papula, the takeaway. Papula going to take a shot. The grounder is handled by Beck. Here's Vita. Trying to get it down to Hallery Sutherland. Not much develops out of that. Well, let's talk about Pittman. She's been very solid. That combination, that center back combination of Pittman, Christopherson, tough to beat. They, they position themselves, they anticipate very well, and they're confident and comfortable to play the ball out of the back, too. So, really dynamic pair. And then, you know, you got the young freshman outside, and then the, the tenacity of Orchard. So, that's a 
I don't, that's, a, that's a tough defense to break down. Yeah, Pittman headed to Johnson County Community College. He's an all EKL player, wants to become an EMT. Got her sister Callie playing on the team. She's a very good player as well. Young sophomore midfielder. Well, you have to feel after that loss to St. James Academy yesterday, 1 0, that the good thing about the uh, loss yesterday is you get to turn around and uh, rectify things the next day. And the only thing that was going to hinder them was potentially the rain or thunderstorms, but able to move this up by two hours and get it in. And the home team has been impressive. Two goals in the first half by. Papula and Coleman, and then on a PK, Papula knocked in her second. But good coaches adjust, right? Losing is okay, it's, as long as you learn from it. Um, so the, the conversation that we had, they felt like they played well yesterday, didn't create enough chances. Now we changed to a 4 4 2 with two fast players up top. So they adapted and adjusted, and it worked. And it's that's paid dividends for them today. They've, they've been very dangerous up top. From a team that coaching staff thought, we can't score goals, we don't create enough, to, to a team that's created so many opportunities today. Roof finding Vitha. Looking up the field of Sutherland. Orcutt has it. Now it'll be the possession game for uh, Blue Valley West, you would think here, Hugh. Just keep it, close the game out, keep possession. Don't do anything silly now. Give an opportunity to players who don't play a lot to get some minutes in here. The same thing for Southwest too, right? They have to get themselves, they, they can't be quick going crazy now too. They got postseason around the corner as well. Taylor Gillis sent it up the field, but West able to take charge. It's a team that's lost three of their last five. So this is a team that was looking for something good to happen. And, but they've still got uh, on the schedule later this week. They've got Aquinas on Thursday. Thursday game for Blue Valley Southwest at Topeka Seaman is next on their schedule. I guess we should say weather permitting in all spring sports is the case. Scheckinger, all fought for outside the 18. There's Hicklin, sending up the field to Vitha, Gillis, Sutherland. And here's Vitha. Good work there by Coleman dropping back. Uh, throw in for Southwest is that last goal maybe if take Kill. some of the sting out of Southwest killed the game for sure and that's we talked about the importance of that next goal that was the winning goal right the third goal either way you know what Southwest gets that that goal to make it 2-1 crazy finish to it but 3-0 just killed the game there's Peyton Carter headed to Missouri S&T to become a Engineer, play soccer there in Rama. He's going to study architectural engineering. And here comes Vita to Sutherland. Now they send it down the field, and Pelfrey is about five yards off sides. Just went a fraction early there. Ball laid back. Nice ball back, actually, in a, in a good diagonal pass. And just the run just went a little bit early. But credit that organized defense again. They stepped up together. Going to be taken, and not much sting on that one. Is Carter? It's like she get got more grass than soccer ball there. Have a lot of velocity on that one. 
Rodez, Perry. Perry been fighting some injuries. Good to see her in the lineup. She's headed to KU. Gonna be studying nursing and minoring in photojournalism, she told me. Papula, good work by Roof. Dispossessing her. Midfield battles going on. Scheckinger. All the while, the clock, the friend of the team in red and black, Blue Valley West, looking for their 10th win of the year. They send it back to Greenberg, working on that clean sheet, Zoe. Greenberg has been very comfortable and confident with her feet the whole That's a huge part of goalkeeping these days. So she's that, that's that added dimension. She comes off the line, out of the box sometimes to anticipate through balls. But that defense has really had the confidence to pass the ball back to her three or four times to take the pressure away. Milner taken away by Inslee. Trying to get it on the foot of Papula and they do, but Roof coming over and playing some good defense. Lexi Roof, energetic sophomore who's made the switch from midfield to defender. She's battled the whole game. Oh, right? She's a scrappy one. She's got a big personality, too. She'll come. Tell you all about herself. Hartweger. It's not a bad ball. And here's Pelfrey trying to run it down, and the easy play by Christofferson. Well, it looks easy when she does it. If I were to do it, I'd probably injure myself. But Pull a hammy, maybe? Yeah. But the anticipation, the reading of the game again, so the cover. What a good ball again, and not quite enough pace from the spin run. Trying to find Sutherland as Greenberg kind of baits her there. Picks it up, punts it down the field. It's just over a minute to play in regulation on the Hy-Vee High School game of the week. It's winding down play in the girls' EKL. Big win for uh, Blue Valley West, a team that's kind of scuffled down the stretch of the year, but it's the team that's been fighting the injury bug. But Coach Amon promised me if his girls were able to get the scoring on track, they could beat Southwest. Is Notre Dame. He was right on with his prediction as his stars came out. Papula, one of their all time leading scores in the school's history. Two goals. Kuhlman, a goal and assist. But uh, you got to give uh, Papula the player of the game. She had two goals and one assist, but I think if you ran down the high V girls of the match, I think you'd have to put Orcutt down, and she did a great job on Macy Ruffalo. Anybody else if she stands out for you? Orcutt loved her attitude, loved her tenacity. Coleman, obviously, we gotta talk about her too. Two center backs, and you know what? Overall, a very good performance by Blue Valley West. And you know what? Let's credit that coaching staff. They made a tactical, structural change coming into this this game changed from a just one forward attack to two forward attacks with only four in midfield with that diamond and it worked today they create scored three goals and created many more there was a win for blue valley west and a well-deserved win for them west gets the win they're 10 3 and 1 t-wolves drop to 13 and 12 or 13 and 2 we're back right after this Well, the home team, Blue Valley West, wins it 3-0 over Blue Valley Southwest. Their rivals, and time now to name our MVP of the game, brought to you by Midland Marble and Granite, the premier source for flooring and granite countertops. You can visit them today at midlandmarble.com. And it's number seven for Blue Valley West. She's all over this game, scoring goals, creating opportunities for herself, creating opportunities for teammates. And look at that assist right there. The timing of the pass. Kuhlman played a very good game as well. 
But two goals today for Papula, one assist for Papula as well. And this shot misses by a fraction to the right-hand side of, of the goalkeeper as well. So strength, power, determination, just a good athlete taking on multiple opponents. And those two combine so well with each other the whole game. And opens up her shoulders, hips, slots the ball in for the penalty kick as well. Goal. Good team performance by Blue Valley West, good team win for them, and particularly a fantastic performance by Marissa Papula. Who has now 19 goals on the year, 76 for her career. Big win for Blue Valley West as they were kind of in a funk, losing three of their last five, but they get the win to go to 10-3-1. And, and Blue Valley Southwest, Hugh, your final thoughts? They were a hot team. They won 10 in a row. They lose, and they drop to 13-2 and two on the year. As we say, special thanks to our school's AD, Sydney Roach of West, Mike Rasmussen of Blue Valley Southwest. Thanks to our coaches, Eric Jones of Southwest and Alex Heyman of West. Our producer, Joe Novacek for Hugh Williams. And our entire Spectrum Sports broadcast crew, Kevin White saying so long from BB Dak at Antioch. Our final, once again, 3-0. Blue Valley West wins it. Say happy Mother's Day to your mom this weekend as we say goodnight from Overland Park.